It's Sunday, July 17th, and you're listening or watching The Chrome Show, episode number three, part of the Geek News Central Network. The Chrome Show is sponsored in part by GoDaddy.com. And of course, The Chrome Show is also a proud member of the Tech Podcast Network. Hey, everyone, welcome to The Chrome Show. My name is Todd Cochran, and I want to encourage you to get over to thechromeshow.com. Check out the previous two episodes. And of course, we're starting to get the show dialed in here. Got a little better confidence today on the uh, on the longevity of the show. We'll talk about that in a few minutes. But by getting subscribed to the show, that will basically assure you that you are always a tune of what's going on with Chrome OS and the Chromebooks, and definitely get subscribed there via iTunes, Zoom Marketplace, or through your favorite podcatcher. If you're having challenges finding the Chrome Show on any of your favorite podcasting networks, please let me know. We'll make sure that we get the show added to that specific network. And of course, you can always send email to the Chrome Chrome Show at gmail.com, Chrome Show at gmail.com. Leave any comments you may have about the show, of course, um, over there. You also can watch the show live, or actually uh, live as it can be, on the Roku or Boxy via the Tech Podcast Network channel on both those devices. So definitely check us out on the Roku and Boxy. Let us know what you think. Back in the uh, in your Lazy Boy, have your Chromebook uh, sitting on your lap and just and kind of follow along or just hang out with me for the, uh, for the short period that the show's on. Hey, I've got a lot of stuff going on here, and um, what we were really worried about, and what I, even after episode two, I was really concerned about the longevity of being able to do the show on a long-term basis and being able to find enough apps and cool stuff about Chrome OS to keep your interest. And I was basically kind of surprised today. I was looking through the, the app store, and I found some, some new cool apps, and I kind of found a new venue to find stuff for the show so we're going to share with you today uh, two or three different apps, one, two or three that work really well with Chrome OS and one that doesn't. So you have to be buyer beware. We'll continue to, to, uh, to tell you about that. And hopefully Google will get that under control here in the coming weeks. But uh, this show, of course, is sponsored by GoDaddy. GoDaddy keeps the lights on here in the studio and allows us to do what we do. So we want you definitely to consider picking up a GoDaddy domain, a hosting account. They've been a longtime sponsor of all of our shows as part of our network. They've been with us since 2005, and really we couldn't do what we do without them. But I do have a great offer for you, and I want you to really pay attention to this because this can save you a lot of money. Um, we've got a hosting offer this month. This is only through August 6th, so if you're watching the show after August 6th, this deal is gone. So what you can do is you can get a hosting plan, the economy hosting plan, for a buck ninety nine a month for the first three months. Okay, $1.99 for the first three months by using the promo code GEEK77, G-E-E-K, G-E-E-K-77. When you get to the checkout counter after picking a three-month term on a GoDaddy economy hosting account. Now, you can pick a year, but it's going to revert to the higher price after the first three months. My advice to you is pick the three-month term, and at the end of three months, renew it for a year and use one of my other promo codes. And I'll have a link to all my promo codes in the show notes today at thechromeshow.com. So you'll be able to basically take advantage of savings all the time at GoDaddy, no matter if you're picking a hosting account or domain name or whatever it may be, just definitely check them out. I want to thank GoDaddy for being a longtime sponsor here at Geek News Central. We also want to encourage you to get over to our Geek News Central. See, it's hard for me to switch shows. Proud sponsor of the Chrome Show. Let's uh, talk about some of our other shows, part of the network. And, of course, you do need to go over to geeknewscentral.com or you can find links to the network at thechromeshow.com. And basically what we have is I've got a series of, of great shows that we produce weekly. Um, we've got Robot Underpants, which comes out every Monday. On Tuesday, you have the Geek New Central podcast. On Thursday, you have the, um, the Gadget Professor with Don Bain. On Friday, you got another edition of Geek News Central podcast. And on Saturday, you got Saturday Morning Tech. And then Saturday or Sunday, of course, you've got this show, The Chrome Show. So we want to encourage you to get subscribed to all those shows and make sure you know, check us out on iTunes or write to you different places. We want to thank you for being subscribed here. All of you that are part of my Ohana that have followed me over here from my other shows, we want to thank you for being subscribed to this one as well. And spread the word about The Chrome Show. Let your friends, neighbors, people you know, about the Chrome show is up and alive and well, and uh, we'll see what we can do for numbers of subscribers in here and, and maintaining sustainability of the show over the long term. 
And I guess, you know, maybe we ought to rephrase the Chrome Show. It's kind of we're in a beta period. <laughs> I kind of hate that word, but uh, I think that's kind of where we're at right now with this show, definitely. All right, let me go ahead and get into the content today that I have for you, and we're going to cover four different apps, and we're going to talk about uh, three that work, one that don't, and that this is part of my ongoing thing is to call out apps that we're having uh, challenges with. It doesn't make a lot of sense to use on the Chrome OS if you're trying to be on the cloud and you're trying to use true apps, not just the browser portion of Chrome. So let me go ahead and switch in here the the browser, and as you can see, I've got the uh, the screen expanded up for you a little bit here. And we've got so three apps down on the bottom. We're going to talk about Lucid Chart, Smartsheet, Creatively, and Mathboard. So a couple of productive ones, one a little fun here for the kids. But let's go ahead and start with Lucid Chart, and we're going to load it just as if the uh, you had clicked on the start button. And I just kind of want to show you guys the what it takes and the responsiveness of the apps. And you can see here that we got a little button. Maybe you can't see in the bottom. It says loading. So it's going to take a second here to load, and it starts loading a tip bar. Now, what I want to do is I want to blow this up for you guys so you can see this better. And uh, that has been part of the challenge on the show. And so anyway, I've got this blown up quite a bit, and matter of fact, to the point where part of the uh, bottom of the chart is off the screen. But let's look at, and this is, if you've ever done a, a true flow chart before, um, you'll know how valuable they are. And you can once you get done with this, you can you can share this, and there's a link they give you to lucidchart.com, and this is where this uh, app is basically originates. We get a little bit of a navigator here, and see if I can move that down and over to the side a little bit. So now it doesn't want to move all the way. But let me just grab one of these blocks, and we'll just put a process up on the uh, on the page, and you can see it just you know it it goes right up on there like anything else would in a flow chart and I can go down here and I can grab a decision point and what I like about this is just watch when I drop what happens is it's not very difficult to get them um, lined up and it doesn't necessarily connect them straight you actually have to use uh, lines to draw in between so you have to take an, and actually draw the line in and I was hoping there we go so actually, that's the opposite way that it's supposed to be. But you can go in here and edit the uh, the individual blocks. You can change the labels on them, um, and it's you know it's got the full rambit of different things that you would use on a a standard flowchart, and the ability to be able to go in and and it's got all kinds of options up here. You can you can change the fonts. You can change the uh, the size you can draw lines you can draw curves let's try drawing a curve on this so we'll go from whoops let me reselect that and like we'll grab the curve and we start here and we go down to there so you can see you can draw curves on the chart so pretty cool from a, a you know a flow chart drawing perspective and you can put colors in here as well there's a, a color charts as well you can pick the color of the process and then you can you can deselect the color chart and change and go over here. And I know that this is completely wrong from what that actual color should be in a normal in a normal process. But once you're done, you save it, and then you just can copy the link and you can share it with friends, family members, people that you work with. So this is a I think this is an awesome, um, awesome app so far. The, all you have to do is sign up to save the document. I'm not seeing anywhere here where it actually makes you pay for a feature. Um, I'm sure there may be some uh, pr uh, premium type of features available on this particular app, but it's slick. It really works well, and uh, I played with this for a while today, and it just it's it's nice. It really, really is. And I think you guys can see it. You know, and if you don't like how something is, you can grab it and you can move the process around. That that totally screws up the picture right there, doesn't it? But uh, you can get as creative as you want with it. You can see that it it's dynamic and it 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 will take the um, loops and, and arrows and adjust them. It keeps everything attached so that there's not a problem in maintaining the flow as you're going through the flow chart. So anyway, again, check that out at lucidchart.com. All right, the next um, app we're going to do is we're going to go right back. Let me go ahead and close this, and we're going to bring the app link up, and we're going to look at Smartsheet. And uh, this one here, I'm, I'm a big uh, Microsoft project guy, and, but you know, if you want to go to the cloud and you want to work in 
Chrome OS, I want to be able to uh, manage stuff and mo uh, manage different types of, and what you have to do is you have to put in your, uh, you log in with your Gmail account if you want. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that to log in. And I want to continue. And it's going to go ahead and I've signed up before, so it shouldn't send me through the process of revalidating here. But it's loading. And uh, once it gets loaded, let me go ahead and expand or zoom this a little bit if I can. Some of these apps are better at zooming than others. Um, and this one will not. So I apologize if you can't see this real good on your screen. But what you've got over here is essentially you've got the same stuff you would normally see in what you would work with in, in Microsoft Project. You've got a task name, a start date, an end date, duration. You've got uh, predecessors. You've got steps and time sections. And then you've got sub-processes down here below where you can set sub-processes within the actual system. You can change whether it's duration by hours or days. Uh, and then the whole ability over here to adjust your text. But everything works in Smartsheet just like it works in, in Project. And this is awesome. It's right available right on the web. You don't have to have any, really, you, you can send anyone over here that's on a Chrome browser, and they can load this up. And, and really, it's, you, you know, you don't, you've saved yourself a couple hundred bucks by using this. And for folks that have never um, worked with the project, you can come in here and use this for free and essentially get access to great tools that are going to allow you to be a very, very productive. And, you know, coming back to me for just a second, I live in project folders. I'm very much a type of guy that tasks things out and I put hours and times and, you know, this is how I stay organized on a day-to-day -day basis. And, you know, some people work off task list. I work off of projects. I have a project. I say, I know this is going to take two hours. Here's what I, you know, here's my ed end deadline. And I'll keep all my projects running. And then I can plan on a week-to-week, day-to-day basis exactly how stuff is going to flow in. And I adjust where necessary. And I know if I'm going to be late on other projects based on one going long or not. So just from a productivity standpoint, you know, I live on a day-to-day -day basis in um, in essentially a flow worksheet like this. And not only can you do projects, you can do, um, if you have a business, you could do time charts, you could do, um, you, other people can come in here and cross edit and work. And you can put attachments on, there's discussion uh, forms be able where you can actually start a discussion on a certain point. So if you got two or three people working on it and you can publish this and make it available. So again, this is called Smartsheet, and this is available over at smartsheet.com. And again, it's an app that you can load on Chrome. It's a true app working right here within the actual application itself. And that's the best part. It doesn't really look like you're working in Windows. And if you need to start a new project, you just, you know, you go ahead and you start with a new blank worksheet, and you can name it. It's just like working in any other type of, um, you know, almost, you know, looks a lot of functions here that you're used to, maybe working in some of your traditional software applications. So, and they give you some templates as well. If you want to use their, their pre-built templates, you can do that. And they've got full sharing stuff. They've got tips that you can use. They show you what's you, how and to navigate this whole uh, um, application. But this one here is going to stay in my permanent use list because I can see myself viewing this on a day-to-day -day basis. So what I want to do is I want to go back now and I want to show you um, my third app that uh, I found that works. And this is more of a fun app for, oh, what am I doing? I'm showing you RVN TV. What did I push? <laughs> uh, we're not RVN and TV. All right, there. I must have pushed the button too far. All right, let me go ahead and load the, um, the math board. And this is, this is something fun. And if you've got um, a child, it's, uh, you know, likes to play in the computer, and you want him to do some basic math stuff. And let me just show you how this works. Now, this is, you know, this is pretty uh, simple stuff here. We've got uh, standard math problems that uh, the, um, the student could use, and he can go through and he can figure it out and choose the answer. Or if he's having trouble, there's the ability. Where did I see this at? Um... Let me just show you what happens. Let me just pick an answer here. Okay, so we'll pick C. Oh, that was incorrect. 
and it says, oh, you did it wrong. So let me go ahead and try it again. Oh, incorrect. So it actually walks you through and gives you a test. All right. So you can actually, um, it times you. So you can actually see what your results are. So obviously, I'm just picking results. Now, here's an easy one. 800. Oh, we did it correct. Woohoo! My upper level math skills are good. But, you know, you have the ability here to um, go ahead and show the problem solver as well. So let's look at this next one. And we can select here, show problem solver. Let me see if I can blow this up too. Yeah, we can do that on this one. So we can make it bigger so you can see it. So let me go ahead and show the problem solver. I click on that. And yes, I want to continue to show pro, pro uh, and it actually marks it incorrect. So what it does is it steps you through the, pro, the, the problem. So here we have 26 times 50 and I go ahead and I just increase the uh, step counter and it shows you how to do you know, how to work through the problem. And this is, you know, this is good for kids that are having a little bit of challenge with the process of doing math. And it gives them the ability then to really kind of get an idea on the correct way to work a problem when it comes to math. Now, if I go ahead and I, I close out a problem solver and I go ahead and um, say, basically, let's see what I want to do. I want to save the quiz so we'll save the quiz. We're going to save this as January 7th. But there's over here some settings, and I can go over here and, and select what I want to have done in this. And I want, you know, addition, let's add subtraction. We can even add some division problems. I can say done. Um, we can select how many problems are going to be in the test. We can do 20, multiple choice. We can uh, have the number range. And so this is kind of slick here on what you can do. You can time it how long you want the, the, the amount of the, the test to be. So you actually can do this on a, on a time. And we can even have some extra math tables here that you can add to the system. So it keeps track of your history of what you've done, and you can track progress of your child. And I think it's a pretty slick little math problem. This is a 399 app, okay? So just so you know that it's, that it's, uh, it's 399 just so that you're aware of the cost. Now, Probably there's some other free websites out there that you can find via a .com website or .org or .edu. They'll probably do the same exact thing, but this can be used um, when you're not online. You, can, you don't have to be connected to the Internet to use this. It loads as an app, and you can use MathBoard in the car. The kids can play with it and do stuff. So it's a great way to test knowledge of your, your younger kids that are still having challenges with uh, addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. Of course, if you look at the answer I threw down there, just as incorrect. It looks like I need a little help too. So let me go ahead and show you an app that I just couldn't get to work. Um, and you know, and what I want to do is, and I hope companies start paying attention to the show here and, and they respond. But I I loaded this app called uh, Creatively, and and what it looked like in the discussion in the in the web store. It looked to me like it was similar to Lucidchart. So I click on this here, and it'll start to load. Again, it asked me to link my email account. I'm probably going to end up with so much spam in this email account. It'll be unbelievable. But you go over to Cradley.com, and you know here it does is it says, okay, download the new release of Cradley Desktop. Well, I just installed from the App Store the newest one, but let's go ahead and try creatively. It says try creatively now, no registration required. So let's click on that. And it's let's see if it actually loads this time. It's sitting here, it's trying to load, it's trying to hi, we've noticed you. So first thing it tries to do is says view plans and pricing. So it wants you to come in and and try to uh, buy a plan. But I'm gonna say remind me later. I'm gonna click on that. Okay, I did get to this point last time, but let's you know let's look at here. We've got uh, project folder. So if I'm going to start a new project, let me go click new project, creating a new project. So let's this probably is not shared with anyone. All right, so let's do a new document. Click on new document, and let's do a people performance model. So maybe this is going to work this time. Maybe I dogged this program for no reason. I couldn't get this far last time when I was uh, playing with the app. So it looks like this time it's going to work. So I retract my statement about creatively not working. 
And if I want to drive something in here, this works similar to, let's blow this up so you guys can see this better, see if it'll blow up. Yeah, we can blow this up. So you can add different types of functions just like we did on the other app. So again, here's another, obviously, a good app that's going to work. And again, a productivity app. And they've got a variety of different types of uh, things you can do this with. You can share. You can import media. Um, you can actually select undo, take something off the page. This is something the other one didn't have. You can fill with color. You can make a variety of different uh uh, charts they come with a whole bunch that are pre-built so it looks like another great app on the app store i feel bad talking about them uh earlier but you know the first when you load it in the pre-show i was sitting here playing and playing and playing with it and i could never get it to um really create a document on the page and uh must be the whatever between the time i was doing the, the show research and now that it, it got up and running and uh had no problem but, you know, that's something we have to consider about when we're on the cloud is this one here definitely ties back to a service. So, you know, if the service goes down or any of these services go down, you could have um, some impact to your utilization of the Chrome OS. But um, I want to share with you something that happened to me this uh, this past uh, Friday. I was, uh, my son had a, he's been going to a program here in Hawaii called Summer Fun. It's a daytime program put on by the, um, the rec centers, a, a county rec center. And it's a great thing. We pay to have them go, and they do activities during the day. But at the end of the program, kids are getting ready to go back to school here in Honolulu um, the 1st of uh, of August. Our school year is a little bit different. We have, a, I guess, a compressed school schedule where they get more time throughout the school year. But long story short, they were doing this. Um, basically, it was a, a skit, a, a musical presentation, and the, the folks said, get down, get down here early because there's going to be like 300 parents are going to want to be here and watching their kids and videotaping. And um, I had, didn't have a lot going on Friday, so I, I got down there about noon. I got my uh, chair set up and basically said, oh, yeah, I've got my Chromebook in the car. Let me go grab it. And I did. And I opened it up there, connected to Verizon. And I had about three or four different things that I needed to do um, that I hadn't got done that yet that day. And between the time that I was sitting there and waiting for the program to start an hour later, I was able to get those four tasks completed. I would not have been able to do that with my iPad, which I do have, just because of the uh, workflow that I was working in needed a, a keyboard and needed to be able to easily cut and paste and change some things and drag in some attachments and that type of stuff. And I was able to do that. Now, I had some comments. There was a bunch of ladies that asked me about the Chromebook and Chrome OS, and I was kind of showing it off to them. And people are very intrigued. I uh, had a business guy that was talking with me about it, and he thought it was good from a standpoint where he's got some employees that are part-timers that he needs to make sure um, he provides some hardware for, but he only needs them really be on the net. He doesn't need them to be accessing uh, corporate type of documents and that type of stuff that he has internal that he doesn't feel safe putting in the cloud, and he thought it would be a good, a viable solution. So anyway, some you know, kind of an interesting uh you know, take from some folks that actually saw the Chromebook in action and I inter and basically worked with. Love to hear your feedback on how your experience has been with the Chromebook at Chromebook at gmail.com. And I'll be back with you next weekend for another edition of the Chrome Show. I hope you enjoyed this edition and uh, definitely check those four applications out. They're available via the web store, the Chrome web store. All you got to do is Google Chrome web store. You'll find them. And again, we talked about Lucidchart, Smartsheet, Creatively, and MathBoard. Until next week, thanks for hanging out with me. Take care and aloha.